my wife said, hey, let's let's homeschool. Let's let's try it out. I started looking into it and I noticed that there's lots of uh, information from from other mothers, but I couldn't find anything about fathers. So I, I just, uh, yeah, I did a lot more research and we did some uh, lessons after I picked up my son from from kindergarten around 6 p.m. Just let him try it out, you know, 20, 30 minutes every evening, just to get him used to, you know, having me teach him. Welcome to Homeschool Talks, a podcast by HSLDA. This is a show about all things homeschooling, from practical tips to inspiring stories and everything in between. You can find show notes for this episode along with our other Homeschool Talks conversations at hslda.org forward slash podcast. And if you want to be the first to know about new episodes, as well as upcoming guests and topics, sign up for our email list using the link in the show notes. We're so glad you've joined us today, and we hope you enjoyed the program. Here's your host, Jim Mason. Hello, I'm Jim Mason, president of Homeschool Legal Defense Association, and this is another edition of Homeschool Talks. If you uh, would like to learn more about our organization, Homeschool Legal Defense Association, you can visit our website at hslda.org. Today, I'm joined by Robert Macias from an undisclosed location in Asia. Uh, Robert is a blogger, a fairly new homeschool dad, with a lot of interesting insights on homeschooling and in today's world with a lot of people choosing homeschooling for the first time. Um, it, we, we thought it'd be interesting to get Robert's perspective because he's put a lot of thought into this. Welcome, Robert. Thank you very much, Jim. Thank you for having me. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm uh, based in Taiwan. I think we're allowed to say that, right? Well, I scratched out Asia on my notes here and wrote in Taiwan, but then it occurred to me that I'd let you say that you're in Taiwan. So yes. what time of day, what time of day is it for you? It's uh, 9 p.m. I just put my son to bed. Actually, he wanted to be on this uh, this uh, video call, but I said, no, 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 no. You just No, oh, too bad. So it's 9 p.m. So here in... Um, Virginia. It's 9 a.m. on Wednesday morning in Taiwan, where you are. It's 9 p.m. on what day? It is uh, Wednesday evening. Wednesday. Wednesday evening. So where does the international dateline? You're so you're you're on this side of the international dateline, apparently. Right. We're at GMT plus eight, and actually, I don't know. What, I I just know that my mom is in Florida, and uh-huh. I know. <laughs> 12 hours difference. So she's just about to wake up as well. Yeah. So we're minus four GMT minus four in daylight savings time. Um, so tell us about uh, your, your homeschooling adventure. You recently began homeschooling. How long ago? Oh, well, you know, I kind of call it a soft start because our son is uh, seven and we started officially uh, last year in January. But uh, We started about a year and a half into his kindergarten because we just figured, you know, we are not under any real time pressures. And my wife said, Hey, let's, let's homeschool. Let's, let's try it out. And I didn't pay too much attention actually, but uh, yeah, you have to pay attention to your wife. So I started looking into it and I noticed that there's lots of uh, information from, from other mothers, but I couldn't find anything about fathers. So uh, I just, uh, yeah, I did a lot more research and then, yeah, we just, we started doing some uh, lessons after I picked up my son from, from kindergarten around 6 PM, just let him try it out, you know, 20, 30 minutes every evening, just to get him used to, you know, having me teach him. And we did that for almost the last year of his kindergarten. So I think it was just gradually just accepted it and we just started doing it last year so uh it was so i have to ask you mm-hmm. the uh, um i don't know anything about the homeschooling laws of taiwan how does it work over there oh yeah there I, you know i'm originally from florida i think the the regulations here are a little bit 
more strict, I think. Uh, luckily, my wife does all the paperwork because it's all in Chinese, of course. But here you have to uh, apply every year and you have to submit like, I think it's like 15 pages worth of information, like your plan and schedule and all that stuff. And then I think during the summertime, they give you an interview. They just want to check it out. You know, are, are you really following the plan? And uh, how is your son or how's your daughter doing? They just want to physically see you in person to make sure everything's all right. And then you have to do this every year. So um, you sort of gradually found your way into homeschooling. What's it been like for this last year? Since we have our own home-based businesses, it's much easier. And of course, we do have some other families that we homeschool with. And uh, we also join uh, or we, we created a co-op. And I can tell it's, it's a bit more difficult. You don't see as many fathers show up. But for our experience, I think we really enjoy it. I mean, it's a whole different lifestyle. For example, this morning, uh, we didn't do any lessons. Actually, today was supposed to be our first official day of the school year because in Taiwan it starts yeah, this week. But uh, we decided, well, we need to go shopping because we had a two-day camping trip uh, over the weekend and we went to the aquarium on Monday. It, it wasn't a school day for Taiwanese kids. Uh, and then we finished up homeschooling in the afternoon. And that's, I mean, it's, it's, it's a whole different lifestyle. It's, it's, it matches what we, I guess you say it matches our schedule. And my wife can take part in it. I can take part. My son is quite happy. He's happy to, you know, take the morning off and go shopping with us and help us. So we enjoy this lifestyle. That's for sure. So you, you mentioned you have a home business. So do you and Sabrina, your wife, um, share in the homeschooling as well as in the business? Yeah. Uh, since he's only in the first grade, I do the English, the handwriting, uh, the history, the science. We do that in a co-op with some other families and also math. So she focuses mainly on Mandarin and music. I mean, she's a music teacher. She gets me to watch him when he's doing his drumming practice. And he also takes part in some, uh, some church activities. He does uh, some, I guess they kind of call it here, worship training. I mean, they're teaching him how to uh, play in the worship team. He plays the drums. There's somebody, you know, another, I think it's a six or seven year old kid playing the piano. There's somebody singing or somebody playing the violin. And they also get some Bible study and some other, uh, oh, Lego. He does a Lego mm. technique. So that, that's something I knew nothing about as well. And when I heard about Lego, I just thought it's, you know, just fun and games. But it's, it's some serious stuff. They teach about physics, science principles. And actually, I think a few, few episodes, well, I don't know how many episodes back, but I saw you also had some guests for, I think it was like Brothers that are now on some kind of like famous show, so. Yeah, so two uh, now adults, but had been homeschooled uh, brothers, won the Lego Masters competition and um, got a big prize. And I mean, they, they, are, they are serious Lego guys for sure. And uh, my, kids, my kids did a lot of Legos and Legos are very popular in my house as well, but nobody managed to make a career out of it. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. So, yeah, we have, I feel that we have uh, a pretty enriching educational experience for our son, and it, it matches our lifestyle. I mean, sometimes he does join us on some of our uh, exhibitions for, for uh, our leather shows. We do some pop-up market activities around Taiwan, and sometimes we're invited for cultural activities because it's a, you know, it's a, it's a traditional I guess you could say industry. It's a handicraft industry. Everything is done by hand. So it also includes bamboo. It's bamboo woven leather. So we get invited to do uh, these kind of shows. And he, he enjoys it. He really likes it. I mean, my, I have two older kids. They're like, nah, I don't want to. It's, it sounds boring. But since he's been involved in it at a very early age, he has fun to join us at the markets and hang out with the customers. And uh, I, I think we enjoy that.
I believe he does too. So you uh, apparently enjoyed your uh, your entry into the homeschool experience so much that you decided to blog about that. Tell us about your blog and where people can find it. Right, right, right. Yeah, that's pretty. That's a pretty different kind of thing to do because my background has always been in sales and marketing and the manufacturing industry. But the past few years, I was working at a, a marketing consultant company. And then, of course, you know, we do websites and videos and all that stuff. But as I mentioned earlier, when I was checking out the information about homeschooling, you know, how to do it and how in the world to schedule all this stuff, it just felt awkward that there weren't any uh, resources uh, from from a man's standpoint. So I think. The easiest way to, well, the easiest way I can learn about something is actually to, to write about it and research about it and try and share about it. And I, I noticed that other people would also be interested and, and give some feedback. And I think it's just, it's kind of a learning experience. Uh, I, I don't really think that I was thinking about making money doing it, but it's just more like sharing what we have and learning at the same time. And I think that's, that was, for me, is one of the best ways to do it. So it really makes me search out the information, find out different resources and, and try new things and record it. And I think it's, it's quite fun actually. So where can listeners find your blog? And uh, we'll make sure and include the link in our show notes. Oh, thank you, Jim. Yeah, it's uh, at uh, Dad Cares Too, D A D C A R E S T O O, Dad Cares Too. I thought it was kind of cute because uh, as a father, we do care. We care a lot. We care so much that we we are leading our household in uh, homeschooling. Of course, my wife doesn't mind at all. I think she's quite happy that I do that. <laughs> yeah. She just walked in the front door, actually. Yeah, so you told me earlier that uh, in Taiwan, music classes have to be taught in the evening, and your wife's a music teacher, so she's just right. getting home at 9.15 at night from her music lessons. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, normally uh, the adults, of course, adults can learn all times of the day, right? But uh, kids will get off, like my older kids, they would get off around 4 to 5. They would have a quick meal somewhere. And then they would be off to some uh, language school or some kind of, a, as they call them, cram schools to, to study physics or chemistry or math. Because in, in Taiwan, they, they load up the kids with all kinds of homework. So, uh, yeah, they have to have extra time, sometimes until after 9 p.m. to complete their lessons and, and tutoring. So it's just, it's crazy. I mean, this is one of the reasons we decided to to homeschool because I think it's the kids spend so much time uh, at school away from home that it's, we, we just didn't feel it was necessary. So as a former marketing guy, um, how's your blog doing? Well, I think uh, we've been doing it for one and a half years. And uh, I guess it's got some traction I think there's not so many people in the United States doing it. It's not like the hottest thing under the sun, but certainly we kind of started doing it at the right time uh, during COVID. Like, for example, like last year, it worked out perfectly because I, I stopped doing my consulting work in uh, January mm -hmm. and COVID started picking up here in Taiwan just about that time. And in the U.S., it seemed to be getting better. So I was like, hey, this, this is a great time. I can go back and see my folks and we can homeschool at the same time. So I was literally homeschooling during the summer and my wife was doing you know, online music classes from Florida with her students here in Taiwan, you know, at 12 hours difference in the evenings, but it worked out perfectly. And when we came back from, from the US to, back to Taiwan, we had to go through quarantine for two weeks. That was crazy, but it was no, it was no, no major issue because we were just homeschooling and we we're used to it. So 
people are stuck at home. Kids were stuck doing online courses, but we were already set up to do our own thing. So we, we weren't affected at all. So it was, it was pretty pleasing to us. It didn't make any difference what was going on outside. Uh, except, of course, we couldn't meet up with all our friends. Uh, we couldn't meet up in the parks sometimes because there are some restrictions. But uh, overall, it's really, yeah, it's perfect timing. So what's your hottest blog topic to date? Oh, about the costs? Ah. At first, I think we did an article a long time ago because that, I don't know, just somebody asked me and I really didn't know. I didn't think it was that much, but we put it together. That was always, I guess, interesting. It's, it's really not too much. I guess you can spend as much or as little as you'd like, uh, depending on, on your family's uh, situation. Uh, how to get some music in your curriculum. That's kind of popular because I think maybe not many people focus on it or not many people know how to do it. Uh, Temporary homeschooling while moving. I think that was popular because I, I believe there were people seriously doing that and, and checking online, you know, what in the world can they do because they might have to move for a job issue or for, for some, some odd reason. So, uh, yeah, that did well. But also, yeah, just learning how to do the blogging. And uh, I guess some of you guys found this as well. I mean, that's... Uh, that was quite surprising. I always knew about HSLDA. I mean, it's uh, the one of the largest organizations in the U.S., right? So, yeah, I think I think it's a lot of fun to to research and see what other people are doing, and always, uh, well, it's kind of funny. People think that I'm an expert now because I have the blog and I, I write about it, but actually, I'm not. I'm just it's my first year. And uh, well, year and a half, but people do ask, and uh, I always share as much as I can. So, is your blog sort of? Uh, I'm I'm experiencing this just like you are, and sharing it with you, kind of a approach. I do the research to find the topics. It's not really oh, what did I do today? So let me write it down. No, I think it's I'm actually uh, careful to check. Uh, is the topic being researched? Because if it's not being searched for on Google, then there's not real any any point to write the article. So we focus on things that are being researched, and of course, or you know, search on Google. But of course, it has to be something that that I can write about that I'm I have experience doing, uh, or have some knowledge about that I'd like to share about. Well, very good. Um... Any uh, words of encouragement or anything you'd like to share with homeschool dads out there? Well, I would say that if if you have a chance, the one thing that I I would encourage is even if you have a chance to do you know one class or one kind of uh, activity during the week, even if it's on the weekend or in the evenings, I would highly encourage it because. When my kids were going to school at a traditional school, I wouldn't have any idea what they were learning about. And uh, if I asked them about it, they, they would just say, eh, nothing, we didn't learn anything today. But as a homeschooling parent, you know exactly what your kids are learning. And it's so satisfying to be able to uh, know what they're learning and know what to you know, chat about while you're waiting at the restaurant. And you know how to you know quiz them on something that you did in the morning to see if they actually remember in the afternoon and it's quite satisfying when you see this and when they're sharing things with other people you feel a sense of accomplishment and you feel well they're really learning something and uh, you see them growing uh, and, and enjoying the education they're getting at least that's our experience so i would say for any father that has any any doubts about it, for sure it's a little work. Absolutely, it's a little work. It's going to take some time, but it's well worth the effort, I would say, because, yeah, when your kid gets something or shares something and they shine, you're going to have, yeah, you're going to have 
no doubts about it. And you're not going to feel tired, actually. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. Well, that's great. So uh, thank you, Robert Macias, uh, joining me from Taiwan. And uh, we'll, uh, we'll let you go get ready for bed, <laughs> as we say farewell. Um, the blog, um, you can find Robert's blog at dadcares2.com, and he occasionally blogs for HSLDA as well. Um, so thanks again, Robert. Thank you for having me, Jim. You have a good rest of the day. Thank you. And I am Jim Mason, president of Homeschool Legal Defense Association. And you can find out more about what we do by visiting our website at hslda.org, where our mission is to make homeschooling possible for moms and dads just like you and me. Thanks again. Bye-bye. Every week, HSLDA hears from hundreds of homeschool families many of whom are facing hostility from school officials or discrimination from colleges and employers. We've helped single parents facing criminal charges for homeschooling their children, families traumatized by wrongful CPS investigations, and even a grandmother harassed by the state for homeschooling her granddaughter. By donating to HSLDA, you can help make homeschooling possible for families like these and enable our work to preserve freedom for future generations. Give today at hslda.org forward slash donate. That's hslda.org forward slash donate. Thanks for listening to this episode of Homeschool Talks. If you've enjoyed this conversation, will you do us a favor by sharing it with a friend or leaving us a review on Apple Podcasts? As a reminder, you can find show notes for this episode along with our other Homeschool Talks conversations at hslda.org forward slash podcast. And if you want to be the first to know about new episodes, as well as upcoming guests and topics, you can sign up for our email list using the link in the show notes. That's all for now. We hope you enjoyed this program and we'll see you next time.